It's been a while since I've done a championship related video, as some of you have pointed out to me in recent weeks, so I thought it was about time that I put that right. As someone who supports a team in the championship, I naturally follow the league closely, and I have to say that across the board, I honestly don't believe the league has been as mediocre as it has been this season for a number of years. That is not to say there are no decent players in the league though, and today I'm going to take a look at some who've really stood out to me this season as looking as though they're too good to be playing second tier football. The championship has long been a breeding ground for talented young players to hone their skills, and I think there are some gems in the league right now. So here are seven who've caught my eye in particular. Ben White. If you have the misfortune of being friends with a Leeds United fan, chances are you've heard plenty about Ben White this season. I'm only joking, of course, Leeds fans. A small number of you are perfectly tolerable in limited doses. Anyhow, Ben White is on loan at Ellen Road this season from Brighton and Hove Albion, a club who are pretty well endowed in the centre-back position, boasting the likes of Shane Duffy, Lewis Dunk and Adam Webster. That is potentially a problem for the Seagulls, who have a decision to make with regards to White, who will be expecting to play regular football in the Premier League next season, wherever he ends up. White had a big job on his hands upon his arrival at Allen Road as the replacement for fan favourite Pontus Janssen. Janssen endeared himself to the Leeds faithful through his commitment, bravery and hard tackling, but White has brought all of those attributes, plus a whole lot more. He's far more composed and considered in possession of the ball than anyone Leeds have had at centre-back for a number of years. White reads the game well, he is firm but fair in the tackle, and he can distribute the ball brilliantly out from the back. He suits Leeds down to the ground in terms of the way in which Marcelo Bielsa wants his team to play, and it's for that reason the Leeds fans are so desperate to keep hold of the 22-year-old. It would take a fortune for Leeds to get Ben White out of Brighton, especially with Leicester City also have mid-linked, and in all probability, I suspect he will be playing regular football for Brighton next season. Ollie Watkins Brentford are a club renowned for their excellent recruitment in recent years, but it has to be said, many of their signings have been common sense. I was amazed when the Bees picked up Ollie Watkins in the summer of 2017 for £1.8 million with seemingly very little competition. The previous season, Watkins had been named as the EFL Young Player of the Year, having scored 16 goals in 52 games for Exeter City, an award won previously by the likes of Gareth Bale, Deli Alley and Wilfred Zaha. Watkins was just 21 at the time, but he immediately became a key man at Griffin Park. He bagged 11 goals in his debut campaign and 12 last season, but this season has seen the talking native really explode into life. A tally of 22 goals from 37 games put him second in the championship scoring charts when the current campaign was suspended, and Watkins is far more than merely a goal scorer. An intelligent footballer and a very capable dribbler of the ball, one of Otley Watkins' finest attributes is his versatility. He looks comfortable out on the right, left, through the middle as the focal point of the attack, or playing just off another centre forward. Ultimately, I think Watkins prefers to play through the middle, whilst being given the licence to roam around, get hold of the ball, and just generally cause the opposition problems. Like most of the Brentford team, he can play one and two touch, he can spin in behind, and he's still got plenty of room to improve. Brentford will lose him in the next 12 to 18 months, unless they are a Premier League club, or he suffers a really serious long-term injury. Of that, I've no doubt. Calvin Phillips Even whilst Leeds United have been in the doldrums of League One or just existing in the Championship, their academy has continued to churn out some quality players, and nowhere is that more true than in the centre of midfield. From Johnny Housen and Fabian Delft to Alex Mauer and Lewis Cook, the Yorkshire club have had a conveyor belt of talent in the middle of the park. Whilst Leeds lost the likes of Delft and Cook to Premier League clubs, they will hope their newfound ambition can keep Calvin Phillips at the club. Phillips is far from breakout star at Ellen Road, the 24-year-old, having made his Leeds debut more than five years ago. To date, he has racked up 173 appearances for his boyhood club, so he has plenty of experience under his belt. Whilst he has spent almost half a decade as a regular for the current championship table toppers, it is since the arrival of Marcelo Bielsa that Phillips' performances have started to catch the eye of those outside of Leeds. A tireless runner with sensational stamina, Phillips, has been carefully crafted by Bielsa into the championship's best box-to-box -box midfielder. Combative, tough tackling and athletic, Phillips is integral to the way in which Leeds United play, and without him, they would be in serious trouble. There has been talk of an England call-up coming his way, but personally, I would be very surprised to see Gareth Southgate call up a second-tier outfield player anytime soon. If Leeds can win promotion and Phillips continues in a similar vein in the Premier League, then there may well be a discussion to be had. Alexander Mitrovic 
In some ways, Alexander Mitrovic is an obvious inclusion as the top scorer in the championship this season, and I think he has proved during both of his stints in the championship that he is too good for the division. Mitrovic last spent half a season on loan at Fulham from Newcastle, during which time he scored 12 goals in 17 league games. This season, the big Serbian leads the division scoring charts with 23 goals in 34 games. In truth, Mitrovic has probably caught my eye the least of anyone in this seven this season, but that is partly because he isn't exactly the most joyous footballer to watch, and also because we have come to expect nothing less. Mitrovic was the favourite to be the championship's top scorer this season before a ball was kicked, and sure enough, he has scored goals for fun. Given that Mitrovic bagged 11 goals in a relegated Fulham side in the Premier League last season, to admit the fact that his international goal scoring record is excellent, I don't think I was the only person who was surprised to see him still at Craven Cottage when the summer transfer window shut. Fulham will no doubt command a princely sum for their star centre forward, but if promotion doesn't come whenever football returns, Mitrovic will surely seek out passages new. Soon to be Serbia's all-time record goalscorer, Mitrovic will turn 26 at the start of next season, and he really ought to be playing top-flight football as he comes into his prime. Before the start of this season, you would have listed Mitrovic among the best players in the championship, and now, when the season ought to be finishing, that opinion shouldn't have changed. Matthias Pereira West Bromwich Albion and Leeds United have occupied the top two positions in the championship table for most of this season, so it should come as a little surprise that both teams are represented in this seven. From Nathan Ferguson to Romain Sawyers, West Brom probably have the most loaded squad in the championship in terms of talent and depth. Whilst the Baggies obviously have a plethora of players who are very good, if not necessarily too good for the championship, there is one who has stood out to me this season. Ever since Wolves stormed the championship title a few seasons ago, championship clubs have been taking interest in the Portuguese Primera Liga. West Brom dipped their toes in over the summer, picking up Brazilian wide man Matias Pereira from Sporting Club de Portugal. Pereira hadn't played for Sporting since 2017, having had a couple of loan moves away from the club, and he'd impressed last season despite suffering relegation from the Bundesliga on loan in Nuremberg. The second loanee in this seven, unlike Ben White, Pereira joined West Brom with a view to making that move a permanent one. Baggins fans will be delighted that that's the case, following Pereira's first season in action at the Hawthorns, in which he has been one of the most exciting and inventive players in the championship. Capable of playing on either flank, but typically deployed on the right, where he can cut inside onto his impressive left foot, Pereira plays with a typical Brazilian flyer. He's quick, audacious, and perhaps the most talented player in the championship in terms of his ability with the ball at his feet. And best of all, I suspect there's a lot more to come from the 24-year-old. Side Ben Rama I've already talked about Brentford's impressive recruitment, and Side Ben Rama was a less obvious spot by the B's eagle-eyed scouts. France's Ligue 2 is as much a breeding ground for fine young footballers as the championship, and Brentford turned their attention to Ben Rama in the summer of 2018 after he had double figures on loan at Chateau. Ben Rama commanded a fee of £1.5 million, but one suspects it would take 10 times that to get him out of West London now. The thrice capped Algerian international hit double figures in his first season in the English game, and he had already hit double figures once again this season before the season came to an unexpected halt. Those are seriously impressive numbers for a wide playmaker who is new to the championship, and isn't necessarily tailor-made for life in England's second tier. When one looks at someone like Riyad Mahrez, a similarly skillful yet lean Ligue 2 import, who played his football out on the wing, despite his obvious talents, it took him far longer to get to grips with football in England than Ben Rama. A constant threat, who is just as bright on the left or right flanks, Ben Rama, almost always looks a class apart when I've watched him play. He is a Premier League player in waiting, and once again, Brentford will just hope he gets there with them. Eberet Chiesa I must have watched every team in the Championship at least three or four times this season, and some many more than that, and no player has come close to impressing me as much as QPR star Eberet Chiesa. He is the best player I've seen at the KCOM Stadium since Ruben Neves back at the start of the 2017-18 season, when it was clear for all to see that both Neves and Wolves were going to be a class apart that season, and I'm including Jared Bowen, Harry Wilson, and Abel Hernandez in that. Certainly, Jared Bowen was more consistent than Eze, and as such, I think he was the best player in the championship prior to his move to West Ham, but in terms of sheer talent and potential, this boy is special. Capable of playing anywhere in a forward line or even in central midfield, Eze can beat players for fun. Quick, difficult to knock off the ball, and capable of sending defenders one way and then the other, Eze is good enough to go right to the very top if he can string all of those attributes together. 
He is magical at times in terms of his skill on the ball. He has a real aura of competence about him in the way he's willing to commit players and he has no reluctance in going for goal. He has scored 12 goals and made 8 assists in 37 games this season, which is excellent for a 21 year old, but if I was coaching him, I'd be telling him he was capable of a whole lot more. Eze's talent does not belong in the championship, but in the Premier League, and with the right coaching, I don't think it would be unreasonable to say he could be a top end Premier League player and a future England international. So those are my personal 7 in terms of players who really made me sit up and take note in the championship this season. Certainly, they are not the only seven, of course, and I could just have easily have gone with the likes of Carlin Grant at Huddersfield, Jed Wallace at Millwall, and Bright Say Samuel at QPR to name but three. Thank you all for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and make sure to subscribe to HITC7s for many future videos about the championship and the world of football beyond.